Okay, welcome everyone to another episode of Image Talk. Today I'm going to be showing seven of the getting ready images from a recent wedding and I'm going to be speaking to some of the technical aspects of those pictures, what went into making them, and uh, more importantly, some of my personal thoughts and, and feelings and opinions on, uh, on this process just in general. So let's get started. Uh, this first image of the bride putting on the earring, you know, this speaks to obviously some of the detail shots that are done during the getting ready phase uh, at any wedding. Now, normally, um, the photographer, and I say, I say it that way because it's more than just myself. I mean, most all photographers, and myself included, when we're at the wedding and we start the day, you know, we, we go and we do these static detail shots. And I'm talking about, like, you know, your wedding dress hanging on a hanger in the window or you know, your shoes on a reflective surface or something that's creative. And we've all seen those shots. And I have, you know, hundreds of them throughout my blog posts and portfolio site and all that. Uh, nothing wrong with any of that at all. It's just that, you know, seven years of doing this full time, you know, I, I get to a point where I start kind of micro analyzing some of what I do and when it comes time to position images in a wedding album or a blog post oftentimes it's it's not the static shots that I feel have the most impact and what I mean by that is rather than having a wedding dress just hanging on a hanger or a pair of you know Louis Vuitton you know, high heels that, that the client obviously spent a lot of effort and money on, you know, instead of just taking a static picture of those shoes, as pretty as they are on a reflective surface or, or whatever the creative shot's going to be, you know, uh, or in this case, she's putting on her, her earring, instead of just taking those shots by themselves, uh, I'm, I'm kind of challenged by getting the, the same shot, but incorporating the bride into it. And therefore, the imaging, the imagery now has more meaning to it. So, when she looks back and she sees herself putting on the earring, it's a shot of the earring. The focus cursor on my camera is on the earring, so that's the focus of the shot. But it's also on her. So now there's a personal connection with that earring. So you know, going further, I'm going to show another image in a minute of you know her wedding bands and and her wedding ring but it's on her hand, right? So that will have more meaning arguably than just the rings, you know, sitting on top of a on top of a mirror or on top of a, you know, surface that that just looks cool. So I shoot it both ways. And to be clear, I'm not saying that I'm not I'm not going to continue shooting the detail shots statically, but what I do do is I plan out time for every wedding that I shoot to shoot bridal detail shots. So although I'm doing it statically in the beginning part of the day, I'm also allocating time to go and to get some of these shots again, but now with more meaning, with, with more purpose, right? And to do it in a way that just makes more sense and, and makes it more of a personal experience. And so far, I have been correct when it comes time to uh, building a wedding album for a client. When the client then goes back and looks at all the imagery, funny enough, most people end up choosing all the detail shots, assuming that I had time to get them, um, of them in the frame. So a close-up shot of her putting on the fancy shoes, you know, stylized shots of her, you know, almost modeling the wedding dress, but it's showcasing the wedding dress. Shots of her holding the bouquet of flowers, shots of her putting on the earring, as opposed to all these things just sitting on a tabletop uh, shot statically. So regardless of how pretty a photographer or myself can make static shots look, the point I'm making, in my opinion, is that they have more meaning if you can figure out a creative way to incorporate the person in those same detail shots. So that's what this whole uh, kind of video is about, and that's why I selected some of these images here to kind of showcase that. Um, and this also shows the segment of the timeline where I'm allocating time for these bridal detail shots to happen, and that's immediately after she's in her wedding dress. So anyway, uh, so here we have her putting on the earring. We'll jump to the technical here. So right here, you know, this is a window light, uh, camera right. She's very close to the window. And then that back wall is, uh, you know, probably five, six feet away from her. 
it's important to know, and this is now for the kind of the photographers out there watching that maybe that may not know this, but I can control the exposure value uh, of the wall, meaning I can make that wall as light or as dark as I want it by one of two ways. I can either feather the curtain, which is uh, controlling the window light camera right, more open or more closed, or the easier way, um, or a combination there of both, is to have her get closer to the window light and that will then darken down that background more and more. And arguably, if I can get her face super close to, to the light source, it's gonna be a softer light, less shadows, and then when I expose for those highlights on her face, the fall off of light behind her on that wall now just renders much darker, or maybe even black. If I want to make the wall less black, like I did in this picture, more of a, almost like a studio look, it was just a matter of positioning, positioning her a little bit further back from the window, and then the fall off of light you know, bleeds off in, and hits some of the wall, and then that exposes the wall in a neutral gray tone, and that was really my goal uh, for most of these shots. In terms of the pose on this shot, I had her hands go more profile, so she's pinching the earlobe, which showcases the, uh, the earring to camera. Uh, and obviously the brightest part of the image is her face, which is by design. So she's leaning in toward that light source. And it's important to you that her eyes are down and not open uh, because the focus is truly on the earring. So we want the eyes and mouth and lips to go a little bit more soft. And you can see that depth of field pretty clear on her uh, wedding band uh, there on her hand, which is uh, in the foreground. Now, this next shot here, um, I'm not going to talk too much about it. It's just, you know, bridging off what I already said in terms of just shooting the detail shots here. And this one, we're just showcasing her, her, uh, her engagement ring. And it's just a simple shot of her adjusting the ring, leaning forward toward camera, and having an even spacing with her arms on either side of her body so that it's a flattering shot for her. Um, and in, and I think it comes out nice. Now, I will say that, you know, getting a nice close-up detailed shot of the rings in a creative way is still, I think, really nice to do as a supplement to something like this. So that could be something cool, like in an album configuration, perhaps this image would be on the far left, and then maybe small would be like maybe a, a, a secondary shot of maybe of just the wedding bands together statically. But, but the important thing is though, is that it's not just that shot. You know, there's something else there to make the connection that that's her ring and it's on her wedding day and that has the more meaning. You know, and we can also see the bracelet here on the other arm, which may have significant meaning to her as well. And trying to shoot something like that just sitting on a tabletop is just not gonna come out in the same way. It's always better to, to get some of that on on the bride herself. So in this shot here, we're showcasing the hairpiece uh, in her hair. Uh, and again, as opposed to shooting this hairpiece statically by itself with no meaning, uh, we have it in her hair. So we can not only see the hairpiece, but we can see her beautiful hair. Uh, and the pose sort of just becomes very natural here. You know, just have her hands up, pretending to adjust the hairpiece. Worked very well. Uh, we can also get a, um, a glimpse of the back of the wedding dress, which is also nice. So the image is telling more of a story here, um, which is great. So it's kind of it's kind of accomplishing more than one thing. You know, we're seeing more more of her details. Another shot of the bracelet, and it's a very personal shot for her. And I guarantee, in an album situation, a picture like this showcasing some of the getting ready is going to be far more impactful than just a shot of a hairpiece uh, statically on its own or the bracelet or rings or or any of that stuff. Um, the lighting here is obviously different so this is a combination of the window light camera right and then I have my assistant just hand holding a simple speed light uh, was zoomed to about 200 millimeters to help control flash spill and he is camera left and the purpose for that was to create a little bit more dimension and texture uh, on that hairpiece as well as her herself. So adding that highlight was very much on purpose and that was by design. And the other byproduct that I really liked in doing that was the fact that that wall that she's standing in front of actually had a very interesting design on it that was reflective. So at the right angle, the light sort of illuminates a little bit of that texture on the wall. And that just really, really worked very well. I saw that texture in the room just naturally, and I knew that if I had light rake across, across it, it would bring out some of that texture. So um, it was a little bit of an experiment on my end, and, uh, and, and it worked very well. So real quick, here's kind of an example of what I'm talking about. When you start grouping pictures together, so this would be 
you know, an example of like a, a, a wedding album page where we took three detail shots and grouped them together to kind of tell the story of, of getting ready, right? So we would have, you know, the ring and the hairpiece and the earrings here all together as the detail items. And then maybe on the other page, we have a shot of her in the wedding dress complete. And then that sort of just walks you through and tells the story of these are the close-ups, these are the detail items, and then here's the final result of her in the wedding dress. So when I'm shooting a wedding, I'm very much thinking about an album. I'm thinking about layout. I'm thinking about how I'm going to group these images together to tell a story. And that's why all of this stuff kind of matters because it's important to, you know, it's important to me as a photographer but just as a storyteller and as someone that wants to create awesome looking content, it's important for me to kind of maintain a global uh, view of what's going on in the day and to look at color tones, to look at lighting styles, to look at all of these little things and how I can go and make things look very consistent all the way through that's going to make sense. Now obviously I wanted to get a nice full length shot of my bride in her wedding dress and uh, here we have it. And at the same time, I've incorporated the, uh, the bouquet of flowers. So we also get that in the shot as well, which is nice. Um, and I did get some close-up shots with her holding the flowers. I'm just not uh, going to get into that detail in this video. But here we have the same lighting uh, setup that I was just speaking about with the speed light camera left and then the window light camera right. Um, I have her this time purposely a little bit closer to the wall so that the angle of my speed light can light both her and rake across part of the wall to extract some of the reflective detail that was on the wall. Um, had she had been further forward, I would have lost that detail on the wall and the light would have not have touched the wall and it would have gone more darker like it, like it was in some of the other shots. So her placement, the light placement, the angle of the light, the direction of the light, all became very important to get the total kind of shot and vision that I had in my head. So in terms of the pose here, uh, it's pretty basic. Um, you can't see her legs, but I do have the camera side leg uh, slightly bent over the other one just to give a little bit of shape and to, rela and to relax her, uh, her hips a bit. Uh, important that the arm that is holding the flowers does have a slight bend in that elbow and the arm isn't too close to her body so it's just hanging very freely and then her other arm is doing much of the same. The whole point of, of posing her arms that way is to purposely create little pockets of empty space between her arm and her waistline in the side of her dress that, that and by doing that it clearly defines uh, her figure and that's very important and that's the most flattering thing that uh, any photographer can do. The dress has lots of awesome texture uh, which the speedlight is helping bring out so that's creating texture, dimension, and mood uh, all throughout the dress and that's about it for this shot. You know when I look at this shot you know in terms of an album uh, configuration I could see this being on the right hand side of a spread and then on the left hand side, I could see a combination of those three detail shots that I took earlier. So it's almost like, you know, you read left to right, you see the three detail shots come together, and then you see the outcome of her totally in her dress head to toe. So now we get to this shot of her in the veil. Uh, and to be clear, I mean, I, I took, you know, several images of the whole process of putting on the veil with mom there and so on. Um, I'm just showing, you know, my favorite end result kind of out of it. Um, so here she has the veil on. Um, the technical aspects here are it's still window light. I've shut down that curtain quite a bit more to create just a narrow slit of light, which also rendered the rear wall to go much darker, as I was talking about earlier. And then with the combination of my speed light on camera left side, handheld by my assistant, I'm able to add a little bit more texture to the veil and show uh, just exactly, you know, that it's translucent. Um, so it all worked very well in that regard between the two different lighting sources. And it also, by the way, that speed light, once again, is bringing out some of that texture in the wall. Uh, and I very much like that. And I love how I was able to just, uh, 
you know, feather the light. And I, I remember saying to my assistant to keep turning it a little bit more toward me, a little bit more toward me, until I got the texture to be about 50% of the frame in the background. So if you look carefully, the, you know, if you split the image down the middle, kind of down her nose, the left side of it is just neutral gray, and then the whole right side of it has that texture leaping. So there's a gradient of not only light, but of uh, texture as well. So it's a very kind of clever sort of uh, lighting setup here with, with that wall. Um, so anyway, so that was the technical aspects. The pose here, um, you know, being very cautious and very careful of placement of hands, profile to camera, arms off the body, creating little pockets of space between her arm and her waist so that everything is very clearly defined. You know, we don't want to have the arm too far forward or too straight down because then, you know, she could appear heavier than what she was and, and obviously she's not heavy uh, in, in any stretch of the imagination. So, but it doesn't matter. It's always about, you know, you always need to kind of give that direction to the client because they just don't know. Um, and little, uh, in, you know, standing a different way, shifting the weight, uh, you know, back would have been worse. So she's very much, you know, shifting her weight forward. Her hips are, are pushed to the background. Her arms are, are spaced out just accordingly. Her hands even just grabbing that veil, uh, just pinching it a little bit is very deliberate. So everything there is all very much in control and by design to just flatter her to the best of my ability. Um, this one here, I wanted to showcase the lashes. So her eyes are down. She's just smiling downward. I have uh, some where she's obviously looking at camera, which you'll see in a second. But uh, this one was just all about the veil. And the fact that she's not looking at the camera and looking down gives the viewer the ability to check out the veil and to look at some of these details without being distracted by trying to make eye contact with her. So that's sort of the purpose too of doing some shots looking at camera and some not. So moving on to this next shot, which is probably my favorite one here of this segment. Uh, just a real pretty, powerful uh, shot of her, beautiful eyes. Um, same lighting situation, nothing's changed there. The only thing different here is that I'm, uh, I've, I've compressed the shot a little bit more, which means that I've zoomed in more with my lens. Um, so the focus is now, because in fact she's looking at camera, I, I want to come in even tighter on that composition. So I've sw I switched her arms around there just a little bit. Um, and the brightest spot here, again, being up in the eyes and the face area, really just wanted to, to just show her beauty and just to show her physique and the veil and the dress. Just a really cool, solid shot looking at camera. Um, not too much here to talk about, but uh, but just really liked it. This last shot is great. That was, that's mom there uh, on the left, and then we have Maid of Honor there over on the right. And uh, there were several shots that were taken during this series. Most of them they were are very traditional in the sense that they're looking at the camera and they're smiling and all that good stuff. But then it's very much my personality kind of comes into play. And before I sort of release them from the from the pose and bring the camera away from my face, I joke around. I have fun. You know, I say, oh, man, I say some crazy stuff uh, out on location, whatever's going on. You know, I feed upon the energy of the other people around me. And, um, you know, it, we just we just have fun. And in doing that, I'm usually able to get very legitimate reactions from my clients. And, you know, in this case, that's what happened. You know, I said something in a certain way and it caused them to all laugh and, you know, look at each other. And, you know, just the, just the warmth in this image is very awesome. It, 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 you know, you can tell that there's a lot of love there. You can tell that they were in a moment that was real. It was not manufactured at all by me. Um, but at the same time, there's still an essence of a framework of a pose. And this becomes sort of the design of a successful um, setup, for, you know, in terms of the photography. You know, it's like I get them, it's like, you know, I dial in the technical elements first, you know, the lighting, the composition, where they're going to be standing. I put them into a loose pose. I get, you know, the the obvious shots and then I have fun with it and I just sort of let it go. And then that's where I'm able to get these shots that people see and that's where they associate the, you know the whole term photojournalistic you know you know people say oh well, we want to get shots of us in the moment and we don't want to pose for the camera and 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 that's all good stuff but you must realize that you can't just have a photographer there like a fly on the wall 
capturing just moments as they go by and expect that they're going to look really awesome because it doesn't work that way. You, there still needs to be control. Now, I'm not saying every shot needs to be posed. That's the opposite, right? That's not at all what I do and that's not at all what I think is, is a good idea. But there's a level of personality that is required from the photographer to be able to go and to get shots like this that look very candid but yet still has a tremendous amount of control in terms of the technical aspects that are going into the image. If I didn't say anything and if I didn't speak up and I didn't set this up, this never would have happened, right? And in and, and all the other shots that I got that look similar to this never would have happened because they're, they're all like running around worried about time and, you know, they have to get the car from valet. We got to get to the ceremony. You know, where are the bridesmaids bouquets? Is the florist here yet? Like there's all of this other stuff that's going on, right? But it takes someone there to take charge and to have the vision and to see the elements, see the room, see the light see the opportunity to quickly put people together and get these cool shots like this. I mean, all of these pictures that, you know, I've taken now several minutes talking about, I mean, I, it took less time for me to capture all this than it did for me to talk about all this in the video, right? So that's what I mean. All this stuff happens very quickly, very fluidly, um, and, uh, and that's it. So anyway, so just keep in mind, you know, a lot of the shots that you see, sometimes there's a lot more to it than what meets the eye. And that's kind of the purpose of me talking about some of my work is because I think that, you know, I think clients should know uh, what goes into making some of these images. And the more that you know about how this stuff works, uh, the more that I can ensure that your expectations are in line with, with reality. And, and that's really important uh, from a client's perspective too. So that's it for now. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, please you can write it directly on my blog or down below in the comment field here on YouTube. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.